According to our new clocks, the time is 11.09 and we are now reconvened in open session. Does everyone have their um, motions? We'll go ahead and do action on closed session items. We're going to skip the rest of the uh, curriculum instruction presentation and maybe bring that up next um, next month or whenever Dr. Decree can work that into the schedule. Um, so we're ready for action on closed session items. Mrs. Bailey. Yes, Madam President, I move to appoint Oscar Perez to the position of Executive Director of Design and Construction. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Bailey and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. <coughs> motion passes. Do we have another motion? The second, the next motion. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Um, Ro Mr. Rosenthal. Oh. <clears throat> I move to renew and to award the non Chapter 21 employment contracts of specified employees for the 2015-16 contract year as provided under separate cover. Second. The motion by Mr. Rosenthal and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. <coughs> motion passes. Mr. George. Um, I move to appoint Corey Collins to the position of high school principal and to approve him as a professional development and appraisal system, PDAS, appraiser for 2014-15. Second. A motion by Mr. George and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. I don't, motion passes. Do you have do you have another one? Another one. Go ahead, Mr. George. Yeah, I move to award uh, the term employment contracts of specified certified employees for the year 2015-16 contract year as provided under separate cover. Second. Motion by Mr. George and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, please vote. Uh, I don't know. Mr. Burdine, do you have something? Uh, yes, Madam President. I move to appoint Linda Esperqueta to the position of elementary principal and to approve her as a professional development and appraisal system appraiser for the 2014-15. Second. Motion by Mr. Burdine and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Uh, do we have some more, Mr. Burdine? Uh, yes, Madam President. I move to terminate the probationary employment contracts at the end of the 2014-15 contract term in the best interest of the district for teachers Lloyd Lamb, David Goh, Dennis St. Julian, Rhonda Rogers, Lauren White, Alvicia Roberts, George Ramirez, and Akitra Hamilton, and to authorize the superintendent or his designee to notify the affected teacher of this action in accordance with the applicable law and policy. Second. A motion by Mr. Burdine and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. The motion passes. Mr. Rice. Madam President, I move to renew and to award the probationary employment contracts of specified certified employees for the 2015-16 contract year as provided under separate cover. Second. Motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Bailey. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote.
Madam President, I move that the Board of Trustees. Second, Mr. Rice. Okay, sorry. so that one passed, so we're ready, ready for the next one. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. That's all right. I move that the Board of Trustees accept the hearing officer's recommendation concerning the Level 3 Employee Grievance Appeal of Francis Kate Mitchell. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Bailey. Do we have discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. I think we might have one more, Mrs. Tossan. We have five more. We have five more, and they're all in Mrs. Tossan's plate. I move to propose non-renewal of Edmundo Douglas Beltran's term employment contract at the end of the contract year, and to authorize the superintendent or his designee to notify Mr. Douglas Beltran in accordance with applicable law and policy, and to specify that the hearing, if any, concerning the proposed non-renewal of Mr. Douglas Beltran's term employment contract be conducted before an independent hearing examiner appointed by the Commissioner of Education in accordance with policy DFBB. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Tossan and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Um, I have to abstain on this because I had a conversation with this individual. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. Every, any other discussion? All right, then please vote. The motion passes. Mrs. Tossan. I move to propose non-renewal of Rashida Yousaf's term employment contract at the end of the contract year and to authorize the superintendent or his designee to notify Ms. Yousaf in accordance with applicable law and policy and to specify that the hearing, if any, concerning the proposed non-renewal of Ms. Yousaf's term employment contract be conducted before an independent hearing examiner appointed by the Commissioner of Education in accordance with policy DFBB. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Tossan and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Yeah, I, I personally know this person, so I'm going to stay abstain from voting for that. Thank you, Mr. George. Do we have further discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Thank you very much. The motion passes. Mrs. Tossan. I move to propose, propose non-renewal of Deanna Jackson's term employment contract at the end of the contract year and to authorize the superintendent or his designee to notify Ms. Jackson in accordance with applicable law and policy and to specify that the hearing, if any, concerning the proposed non-renewal of Ms. Jackson's term employment contract be conducted before an independent hearing examiner appointed by the Commissioner of Education in accordance with policy DFBB. Second. Motion by Mrs. Tossan and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. The motion passes. Mrs. Tossan. I move to propose non-renewal of Rosalind Shaw's term employment contract at the end of the contract year and to authorize the superintendent or his designee to notify Ms. Shaw in accordance with applicable law and policy and to specify that the hearing, if any, concerning the proposed non-renewal of Ms. Shaw's term employment contract be conducted before an independent hearing examiner appointed by the Commissioner of Education in accordance with policy DFBB. Second. Motion by Mrs. Tossan and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Mrs. Tossan. And finally, I move to propose non-renewal of Marilyn Hinton's term employment contract at the end of the contract year and to authorize the superintendent or his designee to notify Ms. Hinton in accordance with applicable law and policy mm -hmm. and to specify that the hearing, if any, concerning the proposed non-renewal of Ms. Hinton's term employment contract be conducted before an independent hearing examiner appointed by the Commissioner of Education in accordance with policy DFBB. Second. A motion by Mrs. Tossan and a second by Mr. Rice. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. <coughs> the motion passes. 
I believe that concludes our closed session action items. We'll now move on to board members' reports. Mrs. Bailey, could you please give the board member activity report since our last meeting? Yeah, I'll do it quickly. Well, the list looks slightly shorter than some weeks. Okay, we have Missouri City State of the City Luncheon, Global Issue Summit, Fort Bend ISD Special Education Community Dialogue Meeting, Fort Bend Chamber State of the Schools, Missouri City Leadership Luncheon, Student Leadership 101 Judicial Session, Baines Middle School Choir Concert, Raise Your Hand Texas Presentation, Volunteer and Community Partnerships Luncheon, Varsity Softball Games, Fort Bend Education Foundation Meeting, and the East Fort Bend Human Ministries Empty Bowls event. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. Do we have any special reports tonight? All right, then let's move on to the consent agenda. Do we have any items on the consent agenda? 11A. To take off. So do we have a motion? Do we have any others? So do we have a motion for the remaining items on the consent agenda? Madam President, I move to approve consent agenda items 11B through G as presented. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Tossan for Consent agenda items 11B through 11G. Do we have discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Uh, so now we're on to action. Uh, from the consent agenda, we have uh, item 11A. Madam President, I move to approve consent agenda 11A as presented. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Bailey for the guaranteed maximum price for Sullivan Elementary School. Do we have discussion? Yes, Madam President. Mr. Uh, Rice. Um, Mr. Cleaver, what I would, I, I just have a couple of questions on this. Uh, this recommendation is to award a contract in the amount of $31,800,468 for the construction of elementary 47. And I'm understanding that the $31,800,468 includes a $600,000 owner contingency. Yes, sir. That's Correct. included. Yes, sir. A 292,988 site road improvement allowance. Yes, sir. And a 1,381,685 technology allowance. Yes, sir. So my question is, I would like an update on the status of the permit. Yes, sir. Why don't you answer that one? I'll get to oh, that. Oh, yes, sir. They, uh, they met on Wednesday, as we discussed last, on Monday, last Monday, and we, they are still trying to determine uh, the status of the uh, turn lanes, the uh, deceleration lanes. We do have a permit for the clearing of the land, but we do not have a building permit yet. Okay. Uh, when do you think you're going to get that? Um, I, I can't speculate. They're continuing to work with uh, the county, I believe, is the holdup now. Okay. On, you, you've got a summary table that shows construction at $32,238,553. Yes, what is the difference between that and the guaranteed maximum price? Yes, sir. That, that sum, okay, the table is the the way that uh, we have broken the the, uh, the cost down into the different categories. And so that was a, a uh, plug number at 75% of the project budget. And so any excess over will go, will roll to the contingency line of that project. Okay. So, so can I just clarify that? So that's, this table here is the budget, the original budget from some time ago. Y yes, ma'am, from and the it's bond. it's not the costs or a budget that we're approving 
it's just a budget at one time because now we're approving a guaranteed maximum price. Y yes, ma'am. The forty-two million nine eighty-four seven thirty-seven is the project budget that was listed on the uh, two thousand fourteen bond program. Okay, so that's a difference of about four hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars. Yes, sir. And uh, and then we have a project contingency of $2,149,237, and what is that for? That, that is the project contingency, not, the, not the, con the construction contingency. The project contingency would be the uh, larger umbrella contingency to, if the FF&E, the furniture fixtures and equipment were to go over, if the architect and engineering fees were to go over, uh, conceptually, if the construction were to go over or the site improvement line were to go over, that is the project contingency, that, which is the overarching contingency for the project, not just for a specific line item. And what is the site improvements? What is that for? Uh, obviously, it's for site improvements, but who's doing the work? Um, it, it, again, that's also a plug number. Right now, for instance, one of the items that we think would go in there uh, could be the, the fiber optic line. Um, for for the project, okay. No one's no one's installing that yet. No, sir. That has not been installed. Well, here's uh, so this is what I would like to see. That I would like to request this from you, Doctor Dupree, and that's a reconciliation of this. At at some point in time, we need to get an update on this so we know exactly what we're carrying because we've. Whatever the project contingency is, now we need to add 483,000 or whatever I said it was to that so we can keep track of it. And I would also like to request, in fact, I think I'm going to amend the motion. I would like, Madam President, I would like to amend my motion to request an update on all change orders for elementary 46 to date and provide a uh, request to administration to provide a bi-monthly update for all change orders on elementary school number 47. Um, okay, we need a second. All right, so. Second, sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. So we have an amendment to our motion uh, by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Bailey. Mr. Rice, do you have that? written down or this is regarding change orders and getting a report about change orders yes I didn't write I got uh, the words I can to. give it to mrs. Kaiser okay but I need it so we know what we're discussing this so is a getting a report about change orders to uh, provide a an update report on all change orders for elementary number 46 46 and to provide a bi-monthly update for all change orders on elementary 47. All right, so we have an amendment and this is, Mr. Morris, I'm gonna need an opinion on this because this is referencing 46 and 47. Did you hear that? Could you say that into the microphone, please? Yes, if I appreciate it, although the item uh, relates to elementary 47, the amendment is calling for reporting on both 46 and 47. That's how I understand it, and particularly around change orders. Yes, and so I, I think he's basically asking for change order reports on both projects, and I think it's uh, germane enough to be considered. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Okay, do we have discussion on this amendment regarding reporting of change orders? Uh, uh, yes, and I would just like to ask Mr. Cleaver, what is the process going to be since we've in, we're including a $600,000 change order in, uh, in this contract? Can you explain to us the process on how that owner's contingency will be accessed? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just as I explained on, on Monday night, last Monday night, I believe, um, the project manager um, will, will bring it up through the, the staff 
to the executive director that y'all just approved, thank you, and then it will flow to me for approval, and all change orders will go on to the change order log. Well, will the architect of record weigh in on the uh, Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. When I said flow up through the process, absolutely. The, That's what you mean. So we've got oversight. And yes, who sir. in the district will approve the change order? I, I will. Okay. Uh, All right. I will be the person that actually signs off and on then, it. And uh, then, so obviously, if we don't use it all, then that money flows back to the district? Yes, sir. One hundred percent. We don't have any kind of shared shared savings clause. Okay. And how long is the construction period for Elementary Forty Seven? Uh, from memory, I believe it's fourteen months. Fourteen months. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Uh, so we've got the process in place, and we've got the reporting on the change orders. And all right. Uh, I don't Mr. Rice, oh, I'm sorry, may I ask one question? Yes. Bi-monthly, uh, and we had this discussion um, in, in the lobby, bi-monthly is twice a month, correct? Well, uh, what I mean every other month. Every other month. Every okay. other month. Okay. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rice. Can I ask a question? Uh, Mr. Cleaver, uh, just <clears throat> I'm not in construction management. Um, when we're talking about contingency and owner's contingency, I understand that's things that we decide on that we want to change. Um, and that is the same as the language Mr. U Mr. Rice is using to talk about change orders. Change orders come out of the owner's contingency? Yes, ma'am. And it, it could be things we want to change, but um, a very realistic example that I have been noticing lately is it could also be weather delays and escalation caused by weather. So it could not, it, it, it's not necessarily just things that have changed. It could be to escalate the schedule. Okay. And uh, Mr. Cleaver, do we have policies or procedures in place to manage these contingencies, these, these change orders? I mean, you just said that you're, the buck is stopping with you, but is this written down someplace or are we just, you're, is it written down someplace? Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I, the actual uh, letters uh, escape me, but it, it's the same policies that we've discussed in the audit multiple times. Okay, so it is in the policy? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I thought I remembered that we had to update that policy, but you're saying it's up to date with you being the person that signs off on those? Um, I, or is I can't that in the procedure? Ma'am? Or is that in the procedure that's associated with that policy? I, I think that I might be mistaking policy and procedure. I believe that would be in pr our procedure. Okay. Well, maybe we could look into that and make sure the board's clear about what, um, what the procedures are, and then that would go along with Mr. Rice's report as he's asking, and we can make sure we're providing proper oversight for this, this project and our many projects to come. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cleaver. Do we have further questions on this amendment? Okay, so we have an amendment uh, about getting uh, reports for Madden Elementary School and Sullivan Elementary School on a bi-monthly, every other month basis uh, regarding uh, change orders. Do we have further discussion? Hearing none, please vote. The motion passes. Uh, so back to our original motion, that is the guaranteed maximum price for Sullivan Elementary with the amendment asking for the change order reporting. Do we have discussion on our, uh, mo on the original motion or on the amended motion, pardon me, the amended motion? No further discussion. Hearing none, please vote. Thank you very much. The motion passes. That completes all of our consent um, items. And now we're on to section 12 of our agenda, which is um, item 12A, which is on page, for those of you following along, 82. Madam President, I move to approve action item 12A as presented. Um, 
Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Bailey to approve action item 12A as presented. Do we have discussion? Yes. Yes, Mrs. Bailey. I'm actually um, going back to board policy here. My first question, CV local that I believe we approved in January. The small business initiative I'm looking, give me a second. Okay, this is something I think that's very important to the board that we are awarding business to our small businesses. But on our scoring sheet, we're not adding any points. Is there any way we could add that to our matrix and give additional points uh, to our local? Bob Fizakerly's question. Y yes, ma'am. I can. Uh... Thank you, Miss Bailey. Um, my understanding of the policy as written is that the policy applies to construction. And um, the policy as written would not apply to the professional services that are being presented to the board this evening. Um, uh, that said, we, we are aware of the small business initiative and we, um, uh, we do our best even outside of the policy to assure that the small business initiative is observed, but the policy itself, my understanding of the policy itself is that it applies to construction. Does anybody have discussion on this? Because when I approve this, I'm sorry it was all during the zoning, but I thought we were applying this to all of our, we're going to cons give consideration to award or give extra points to small businesses bidding well, I think there was a couple of things there. One is we may, it may say construction, and if we don't want it, if we don't mean construction, then we need to maybe amend our policy. So that would be one comment. And I, it seems like there were some rules about, um, and, I, and I don't recall the rules. I don't know the rules that have to do with the points being assigned for small businesses. And Mr. Morris, is there something that you know about that? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, having to do with, can we, uh, Mrs. Bailey was asking about assigning points based on a business being a small business when we're doing an evaluation of a um, proposal or a, a submittal of qualifications. Can we, can we, has part of the scoring matrix use small business versus not small business? I think you can use small business, but I'd have to review your policy to see what it said regarding that. And, and off the top of my head, I, I don't know as I sit here what it says about that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bassett, do you have a comment? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at, I think, what we have. And, I mean, yes, we did, we did have for construction only because I think we were just going to get started, and that's what... That's how it was originally uh, discussed. But I think what we're able to do, though, is for the construction is to have 5% of the maximum points available could be awarded for uh, small business. So, so it could be part of our matrix for the, uh, uh, for the construction activity. So I, I don't know how the other, everyone else feels, but I would like to have that in the, in the matrix. But when you're talking about construction, it still doesn't address, can we do that also for our um, architects, engineers? We can do it for any number of procurements, but we would need to adjust the, the policy that was, that was adopted by the board earlier this fall. How does everybody else feel about that? I agree with you. Yes. So can we look into changing that? Yeah, sure. I agree. Thanks. Yes, okay, so Dr. Dupree, can you put that on the to-do list? Yes, ma'am. I'll follow up on that. So 
we have a list of policies that need some revision, so please, if we can do that, and that would be great. Uh, okay, so getting back to the um, getting back to the uh, the list we have here, we have a list of <coughs> we have a list of um, vendors. And we have a list of projects. Do we have further discussion? Mr. Rosenthal or I'm thinking. I'll wait a little bit. Mrs. Tosan. Well, yeah, so the, the first thing I'd like to say is that I, I really view these as two separate items um, that I would probably feel better discussing separately and maybe voting on separately. Um, so to that end, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. So I move to divide the recommendation for action item 12A into two separate questions. The first question being approval of the recommended selection of professional service firms, and second being approval of the assignment of phase one projects as recommended and authorizing the superintendent to negotiate and execute contracts for the assigned projects. Second. So, Madam so, Board President, yes, with that so motion and second, that motion to divide the question is not debatable. You would simply call for the vote. So, so this is a motion to divide this, the original motion, into two questions. One is uh, the list of firms, and the second is the list of assignments. Correct. All right. So is everyone ready to vote? So, no, I, no. so we can't. No, I don't can we get a rationale for that? For that, it, or we're not, not allowed to discuss it. it? It's not a debatable motion. Uh, it simply would take uh, the the prevailing issues and split them into two, and then you could have deliberation regarding each of the two separate questions if the board votes to divide the questions. Okay, what are we dividing again? I'm sorry. We're we're taking the original motion, which is up there on the board. Yes, and. This is uh, the recommended selection of professional service firms. That's one piece of the, that's one, that would be one part, part A. And then the assignment of phase one projects as presented, that would be part B. So we're just, we're just, she made the motion in Mr. George second to split this, what was originally one motion that, she, that you, Mr. Rice moved and you seconded and now splitting it into two parts. Are we going to have discussion on the two parts? Yes, we're going to have discussion on the two parts. If we, if we decide to split the motion. If we decide to split. So part one is this list of professional service firms. Part two is the assignment of phase one projects as presented as well as the authorization for the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contracts for the assigned projects. Did you understand what we're voting on? So we're voting to split the question or divide the question, that's the term. So please vote. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, just a minute, go ahead. Okay, so we're, the first thing is we're just voting on the firms selected within all no, we're, vo we're voting right now to decide whether we split the question into two pieces or we keep it together. So a yes vote splits it into two questions and a no vote keeps it as one question. Okay. Does everybody understand? Okay, please vote. Motion passes. So now we have two questions before us. So, Mr. Morris, do we need a? Uh, can we work from the original motion? Do we, or do we need a, a motion now? Well, they've been divided. So, uh, on the table is the first piece, with piece which is uh, consideration of the recommended selection of the professional service firms. 
So that's right. before the board and the board can begin deliberation on that question. All right, so we have a motion on the table regarding the professional service firms, which is the list on page 86 of your board book. Keep going. Yep, there it is. Isn't it really the first 14? That's the recommendation from the administration. Right. So, yes, sir. Excuse me. So it's the. Is it spelled out on? All right, so the list of them is on, um, well, that's the list right there also. On the board in front of us, there's, there are 14 architectural firms and two civil engineering firms. Did we have discussion on this, on this list? All right, hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Now the second part of our conversation is the assignment list, the assignment of the phase one projects as presented as well as the authorization for the superintendent to negotiate and execute contracts for the assigned projects. And I believe that list is on page 84, yes. And into, yeah, page 84. Uh, Madam President, I would like to make an amendment to this motion. And that amendment is to accept the administration's recommendation and to give work to all of the 14 firms uh, that have been selected and at, the, at and this time. 14 architectural firms and, and what about the two? The two civil engineering firms at this time. Second. So we have an amendment to the motion um, by Mr. Rice for... To accept. To accept. The administration's recommendation. The, the administration's recommendation. And award. A work to all of the firms on the approved list. At this time. At this time. And we have a second. So do we have discussion on this? I mean, just to understand. That's a good idea. Mr. Rice's amendment here. Are you asking us to vote? that we award work to all of, if possible, to all of these firms on the list in the 2014 bond? The ones that have been recommended by mm -hmm. the administration. Well, that we just approved. I'm, I'm recommending that the work be awarded, this is the second part of the question, as presented by the administration, the projects as presented by the administration, and firms that have been approved but haven't had work assigned to them yet have work pulled forward from the phase two or three portion of this work and awarded to them at this time. Okay, and, I, and Max, I guess you're gonna work on those phase two and three, is it starting in October? Um, <clears throat> we can, as Mr. Rice said, we can pull them forward uh, to begin work now, or we could leave the date as the date is and, and plan to begin the work then. We could go either either way. We could either pull it forward and work now, or hire or, or approve them and hold off and, until that date to begin the work, either way. I don't think I asked my question correctly. I'm asking right now, I think Mr. Rice is asking us to award work to all those for firms in the 2014 bond. Okay. So I guess the firms that did not get work on these 
13 bundles, right? Yes, ma'am. We would consider the other firms first. When we look, when I say phase two and three, I'm talking about the 2014 bundle. Y yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, we have those um, phases two and three packaged up now. We have it in a draft form for packaging. Mm -hmm. And so um, we would be prepared to go down the list of packages and, and award those, those vendors, or award those ar architects. We could do that. Everybody, I, questions? My, my only, the, the way it's worded, I, I think I understand what you're saying. The way it's, the way it's worded, it sounds like Mr. Cleaver is supposed to put those on a list like right now, and oh. then we vote on them. That's that's yeah. my only. No, no, not put on I, the I list. Know, I think okay. you, yeah, I don't think you meant that, but that's just he's got to pull them forward right after tonight. As long as we all understand that, right, and figure out a plan for what the timeline for those different things would be. Is that is that would that be accurate? And then I, I have another question. I think, I don't know, but I think that maybe someone can help me out because I'm scrolling through a lot of pa pages. There was, at one point, there was a conversation that these architects and engineers were for 2007 and remaining 2007 work because some of the projects on this list are 2007, right? Like middle school for 15. And mm -hmm. And there's still other work from 2007 that's not been done. Is that <laughs> is that that is correct? The two the two 2007 projects that come to my mind are there was one on there for the Missouri City Middle School gym renovation, <clears throat> excuse me, and a West Side Ag Barn. Okay, and so I guess what I'm saying is, uh, is this is the, the original motion the original item we have here is this referencing 2007 and 2014 or do we need to further amend what mr. rice has said to include those 2000 outstanding 2007 projects in the possible list of work that might be assigned to this list of architects and engineers that we've just approved um, th this may be a an attorney question but it seems that if we're going to assign these folks work from the 2007 bond we would need to say that okay so, uh, Mr. Rice, would, would you mind maybe, um, I don't know if you can rescind your amendment and then uh, rephrase it to make sure we're covering 2007 and 2014 bond work, if that's okay with Mrs. Bailey, because I think she was the one who seconded it. Is that okay? And with you, the board's consent, I'll rephrase that to say uh, amend the motion to accept the administration's recommendation of the current project assignments and to award work from the remaining 2007 or phase two or three of 2014 to the 14 architectural firms, the remaining architectural firms, those who don't have work on the board right now, and the two civil engineering firms to be awarded at this time, work to progress at, at this time. Second. So we have a motion by Mr. Rice and a second by Mrs. Bailey for an amendment um, to award work from the 2007 bond or the 2014 bond to the remaining uh, firm, architects and engineering firms that we have approved tonight. Do we have further discussion on this amendment? Yes. Yes, we do, Mrs. Tosan. So just a couple of things that, that I wanna point out that are concerns or just things that I, I think that are, cons are <laughs> Uh, important to the board as we move forward. First of all, um, we had talked last week about getting some explanations about why certain work was awarded to certain architectural firms 
and we discussed various reasons, including that we some of them were skilled in certain areas or some of them already had work. For example, uh, middle school, what is it, 15, that's in Siena. And so we were looking at elementary, elementary school 48 to that same firm. Various things were discussed. And I had asked for some explanations about why specifically we were awarding work, a, a specific project, I guess, to a certain architectural firm. And I didn't feel like that we got that explanation in the chart that was given to us. I felt like there were some generic reasons that they were selected in general, but I didn't feel like we got any specific detail on why certain work was awarded to certain firms. Um, so as we're voting on this tonight, uh, that's just that's something that I, I, had, I know you and I talked, Max, even after the meeting, that that was something that I felt like I needed in order to be able to, to move forward on voting for this. Um, so I, that's really still something that I would like to see, what the rationale was there for the specific assignments. And as we're going forward, is there gonna be a methodology that we use? Are we gonna randomly assign? How, how that's gonna work as we progress through the, the bond program? Um, did, do you wanna respond to that or? Uh, yes, ma'am. We, uh, we put our heads together and uh, provided uh, some information. I, I apologize it wasn't detailed enough, but we will, uh, we, can, we can certainly try to do better. Okay, I appreciate that. The other thing is, and we talked a lot last week about the ed specs and about moving forward on that, and I think we even discussed having a workshop on that last week, and that's something that I feel very strongly about before we, before we move forward. Um, I did a little bit of research and I looked at the ed specs that we have now, which frankly I think are wo woefully inadequate from an educational perspective. It, you know, it outlines some details about classrooms and technology and whiteboards and various things like that, but educational specs I think have to come from it from the standpoint of how we're gonna deliver our service, how we're gonna deliver education, and I talked about this some last week. I think there's a lot of work to be done there. I have some concerns about moving forward with, with building design when we don't know or haven't written down or haven't gotten specifications around how we plan to deliver educational services going forward. I, I'd like to, I mean, we don't have policy listed in it. We don't have, you know, anything listed about uh, how we expect to provide this service to our students. It's really just kind of technical. So I have some concerns around that. I would like to see us nail that down as quickly as possible. And I don't know if you guys can give us a, a time frame for when you think that could be done. And if we can get a workshop on the schedule pretty quickly as we're, I, I know we, we have a, you know, a strict timeline and, and we're trying to roll these, these schools out and we have a, a great need for them, and I think we're all, we understand that. But I personally would like to see us get these in place before we start designing schools and having to consider, uh, you know, school designs. Yes, ma'am, we agree. Um, we, we believe we can deliver the ed specs and design guidelines uh, at the June, in the June board cycle. And in the, in the interim, while the uh, design professionals are coming on, there's plenty of pre-design work to do, you know, getting the contract, just getting the contracts done and negotiated, um, getting the, the, draw, the record drawings and getting comfortable with those record drawings, doing the walkthroughs of the schools, doing the surveys, uh, the geotech. There's, there's several things we can get moving ahead of time, so it won't just be idle time uh, while we're doing the specs. And as we bring the architects on, it's also our goal to um, have, have them look at a couple of them, have a couple of them look at the ed specs and, and give their input as well. So sort of leveraging some, some of that. Okay, so let me ask you, what would a board workshop look like on that? Who would be involved? And is that something that we can try to get scheduled so that the work that, is, that you guys do on this is meaningful and we have our, our input on that? 
Well, we can, of course, schedule it at the board's, you know, wishes. But we'd li like a little bit of time. I know, you know, there's organizations we might even want to contact with a facilitator or somebody to come in and maybe present to the board externally to kind of help bring some fresh eyes to that. But we, we can certainly, there's lots of organizations, CEFB being one that's got some good resources for us and, and some others. We might even bring some of our current architects in. Okay. Does anybody else have any? Yes. Yeah, I, I agree with, with what Kristen's saying. Um, it would be good to incorporate that now. And at the same time, I guess I kind of had asked this last week. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it was good to have the PASA update. Um, so I guess we've kind of already decided on the size of these schools. Um, because I, I guess I was expecting, maybe wrongly, but I was expecting that there'd be some future discussion as to what was actually needed, for example, in Harvest Green or Siena, you know, rather than just say, okay, every school's gonna be 850 students. Um, so, you know, do you have any comments about that? Uh, yes, sir. During the entire planning process, the, um, the schools going forward, with the exception of uh, elementary school 47, were planned at 1,000 students on the elementary side, and the uh, middle school was plugged at 1,400 students. So we're looking at the, the, these future schools that, that we're talking about here are going to have a capacity of 1,000 students. Y yes, sir. That's what the planning number was during the, during the planning process. Okay, and you feel that... that the, Looking at what we're what we're predicting, those would those would be good sizes for those areas. Uh, yes, sir. I mean that's that's the okay. way we planned it. That was our part of our planning criteria. Okay. All right. Can I ask a clarif clarifying question? So when we saw the PASA presentation tonight, and they're talking about schools, they're talking about a thousand child elementary school. Yes, ma'am. Okay. See, I I think that that was. I'm not, well, I don't, if it was communicated, I, I missed it. I just completely missed it. I thought that at some point there was going to be a discussion about that. Um, but obviously I misunderstood or maybe several of us misunderstood. And do we feel, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that's okay. Do we feel like this is a, a thousand person elementary school is the size that our community wants, that this is an environment where we can deliver excellent education. I mean, I, I'm really kind of surprised. I guess we were thinking, I, I don't know where we got the number, 850, but maybe even 750, we had some different conversations. I'd have to go back. I thought it was in the capital plan. It was 850. That 47 was? 1,200. 1,200, and then the other, I don't know. if I'd have to go back and try to find my capital plan but the, in the bond addressed. it was yeah that, that we'll, we'll we'll confirm and get communicate that to the board if it was <coughs> yeah see and, and that was part of the reason I was well one, one of the reasons that I was a little uneasy with with this whole plan slash process because uh, was, we we used the term cart before the horse last week you know and I was prepared to say that as well because um, I didn't know that some of these discussions or these determinations had already been made. Um, and again, that just could be, but it doesn't sound like it's just me that missed that. So there was something, well, something crossed. Well, that was all, I mean, uh, I mean, with all due respect, that was all part of the facilities master planning yeah. process. I mean, see, I that's, seen how, that's how Riverstone um, so right. that ended up that size because that community desired that size. For that school, I do remember that discussion. But other you know, communities also weighed in. Right. And they said they wanted the smaller ones. Okay. Because I remember what Mrs. Bailey was saying. I kind of remember that 850 size. I, you know, when I just heard 1,000, I was <laughs> surprised. So um, maybe we can get that information back again. We'll follow, some follow up with you on that. Yeah, I had... And then I have a I have another question uh, for Mr. Cleaver. Um, if um, if an architect architectural firm creates plans, um, how does that 
get transmitted to the district or to the contractor? Is that like electronically, digitally? I mean, is it are, there, are, these, are these things kept digitally, like AutoCAD or something like that? Yes, sir. Actually, one of the one of the really, um, I guess you'd say, innovative things that we're going to start doing is in our is in our design reviews and plan sharing. We're going to be trying to use a, a software called Bluebeam, which allows you to share plans. Um, so to answer your question, we, we get plans in electronic format, but generally speaking, like at the job trailer, people still like paper, you know, so you also will always still have some paper plans. So, um, we, we have both electronic and, and hard copy still. But so is it fairly easy for, for one firm to kind of look at plans from another firm and be able to kind of replicate or duplicate that? If those things are all digital or um, you know I, I'm not a an architect so I don't know what the rules are about copying others plans um, I don't think that's um, I don't mean copy uh, no obviously you're not gonna steal somebody's no, no no that that was a bad bad choice for but trying to understand what they were doing and then kind of replicating it in their own way you know not again not taking their plans oh this then putting their own name on it no that's I not what I'm asking. pretty have a high degree of certainty that some of that happens that I mean a good idea is a good idea okay and where I was going was just you know with the whole middle school 15 and and I guess seeing the need to kind of use the same firm on the the I want to say adjoining elementary school you know so I, I, that was one of my questions is you know, because uh, it, gets, it gets to that whole order, you know, of the ranking and whatnot. And I guess to me, it, and, and, and also looking at some of your rationale here that, that you provided this past week, um, I don't know, that some of it just seemed a little, a little random. But, you know, at the same time, I realized that... Um, we have to uh, we have to start moving on with this stuff. So um, kind of have to balance things because I, like Miss Tossan said, I was quite frankly, you know, a little underwhelmed with some of the, you know, the explanations. I thought we were going to see a little more detail in in some of this. So I apologize. We Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. I think Mr. Burdine might be next. No, he's passing. Mr. George. Yeah, um, Mr. Cleaver, I don't know you already mentioned this. Refresh my memory. Um, we could build all these good buildings, but end of the day, the teachers, principals, the, the, those people are going to occupy those buildings. How much input some of those people have? Because we don't know who is going to be teaching there, but at least at a at a assistant superintendent level or something like that. Um, how much input we have in this designing process uh, coming from an academic perspective? Does that make sense to you? Oh, absolutely. Asking? Yes, yes. At the end of the day, this, the buildings, that's what, it, that's what the but, purpose is, is academic purpose. And so um, to date, what we have done is we have included chief academic officer and the deputy superintendent uh, their directors, their their department heads, and uh, we have uh, the teachers' input has been funneled up through through those people. Um, I don't know if um, uh, Dr. Whitbeck or I would like to comment any or, or Dr. Hill, but yes, we absolutely solicit the the input of the people that will be using the buildings. Yes, sir. Okay. The, I example, mean that is. Uh, I'm sorry. No, the coordinators, like for example, in fine arts. Uh, Jim Drew, Joan Marsh, they were in there looking carefully at the art, the music areas, things like that, because they've taught and, you know, they sort of represent that group. Um, we have planned um, in May the next um, Academic Advisory Council. Um, that is a group that um, consists of teachers from various levels and buildings and also um, some community members and some paraprofessionals. And we have, um, Max and I already talked about um, seeking their input a little bit about um, classroom uh, design, 21st century learner, how they might want to give us some input as kind of a next step right. uh, for the future. Right. 
so how much input we get from especially with the special need teachers and that kind of people also um i do believe well at the time the uh director and coordinators it was the same way sure. it was more funneled from the teacher level not so much bringing in the exact teachers in the classroom uh, at least that's my understanding is that correct uh, i believe so yes but the um, special ed director and uh, coordinators were involved in that and like classroom looking at the classroom design um, various aspects of it every step of the way the architects and also in my past experience um, having uh, you know opened schools um, I've always found the architects to be very helpful with school personnel because they have a lot of um, ideas they see a lot of different things the different districts are interested in and they bring a lot of ideas to the table and um, it's so far in our experiences I found that to be and with Ms. Dixon coming on board when uh, Dr. Hill and I met with her um, and several of our staff um, on elementary 47 it was that same type of thing they have a lot of expertise and they really ask a lot of great questions would this be better than this how do you feel about that and it really is very helpful to guide okay. the educators okay thank you all right do we have any more um, discussion I have a couple of questions so um, I guess we're going to try to get these the ed specs situation resolved because um, I've, I've frankly mr. Cleaver we've heard some confusing news about that from from February and March time frame when we when we had the design and construction audit report and then um, you know we talked about maybe getting that stuff in April and then last week we talked about 30 to 45 days and so I see this kind of being pushed out and I understand you have a lot of work going on I also have, but I'm feeling pretty firm and I'm getting the sense that the board is pretty clear that they want to get that piece of it nailed down. And um, I can just recall from the last two and a half years on the school board that Mr. Rice has asked about updating the ed specs uh, just about every constru construction project we've talked about. And um, so this is not news. This needs to be done. I also seem to remember that uh, SHW was involved at one point in updating or partially updating the ed specs from the version that you uploaded for us this week. I seem to recall that there was some, there was some updates done. I don't know if that's, I don't know when that happened or what the timeline for that, and I may be recalling it incorrectly. We talked also about Jacobs being involved in that process of updating and um, I guess it's something that the board in the end is going to approve um, and to what level of detail we're going to get involved in it I hate to think about but <laughs> but I also think we have some ideas and and some at least some big picture ideas about what we really want to see in the next wave of educational environment for our students and we certainly don't want to be um, producing I think Mr. Rosenthal said the same old thing uh, doing the same thing and not um, being innovative and really understanding how our how our teachers and our students right now in our older schools struggle to adapt their 12-foot hallways to collaborative learning environments and they push their desks and, and they're all really heavy and they can't get them through the doors and so they're carrying them, you know, whatever. And it's, it's very difficult for them to create these kind of environments. And I think that the board is concerned that we need to get a handle on this and get an understanding of what exactly it is we want before we start uh, architectural firms running down the road designing building additions designing schools if we don't really even conceptually know what we want and maybe some of you do but I haven't had that conversation with with these folks yet and I haven't had the conversation with you so we need to all I feel like get to the same place on this you want to comment on that mr. Yeah, I, I agree and that it actually yeah, you know, I had I had some other comments. Maybe I'll issue them now. But along those lines, is is I feel like we're kind of in a 
we are kind of in a difficult spot because we have a lot of these questions that are unanswered. Yet we know that there's pressure to start these projects kind of right away because we promised a lot of people that if they granted us the money for this bond, we would deliver these projects. And so I don't really feel um, perfect uh, about the things that you're discussing and we've discussed. Um, and so, you know, we, we, need to dis we need to have those discussions. We need to feel good about what we're doing here. And, you know, just like I said, I, you know, I don't necessarily feel comfortable with all, you know, the, this whole selection process either. But, you know, so is it what we have to do as way well is, 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 is it good enough so that we can get moving on? Or, you know, you know which, which does the least amount of harm here? So, you know, um, yeah, I just, again, I just, to me, some of this, some of your process here, to me, just seemed random, and I don't get it. So, um, in the future, I, I would like to see, I would like to see this whole thing um, be better explained, for one, and then, um, seem more rational to other folks outside your immediate circle, like the ones who have to actually push these buttons and make the decision. Because it, it, it's, there's some things that are bothersome here, you know. But again, we have to weigh the overall, the overall direction of the district and, and the desire to, we know we need these schools. I mean, we just saw some of the numbers and we need to alleviate those problems but we need to know what we need. And that's what I'm fighting with. And then we need to understand why you made some of these decisions. And, you know, um, that's why I said I'm, I'm not wild about the explanations that were received because some of them, you know, again, the process, it's a process, but I guess I just had a lot of questions, but that's the difficult decision here, so. I just want oh, Miss, I just wanted to uh, I completely agree with Mr. Uh, Dave Rosenthal and I share the same concerns but at the same time we understand we have to move forward so I just want to let you know that I have the same concerns thank you okay well I'm going to comment on that I guess I would say uh, Mr. Rosenthal, yes, and again, what it appears maybe what we're missing here is a clear procedures or for how we're going to navigate our way through this through this process because I, 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 I hazard to guess that this isn't the first I mean this isn't the last big decision we're going to have to make, and we're going, these things are going to continue to come up, and we need to get ahead of it. We need to get the policies in place, the procedures that go with them, ahead of the decision making. Because when we're sitting here and we're making these very important decisions and we're taking responsibility for them, it's important that we have clear guidelines in place that direct the work. And that to me is the piece that is missing. And I'm I, I understand how we, you know, we're on a time schedule. We're on a time schedule, and I, and I get that. But I also, um, I, I, this is a, a very difficult position to be in. I'll just say it like that. Does anybody else have any comments? Mrs. Yes. Bailey. Yes. And by the way, we're discussing the amendment, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Mr. Morris is keeping track. If he's still awake. Um, I, I still, I, I am agreeing with everyone. We have to move forward again to award two schools to one architect is unacceptable. And in the forward, in moving forward, I hope you consider that. Um, because we have some firms here that were ranked a little bit higher than some of the others. Uh, 
And again, I agree with Ms. Tasson. We need to have more rationale for these assignments, the ones I've got. They don't entirely convince me, but I, I know you all did it. Uh, you did hard work, and I know it was tough, and I, and I appreciate that. But I just hope you understand the board's concerns too, and consider that moving forward. Mr. Burdeen. I agree with the rest of the board. Let's vote. Is that a call for the question? All right, so we have, uh, we have an amendment um, regarding the 14 architectural firms and the engineering firms being awarded work from the 2007 and 2014 bond programs. So we're voting first on that amendment. So I have my green light on for a while. Can I make one more comment? Oh, I'm we sorry, vote? I can't yeah. see your green light because there's <coughs> a lot of stuff. There's several binders between okay. me and the green light. Yeah, so the, I, I would reiterate what Mr. Rosenthal said, and I, I absolutely feel the urgency as well. Uh, I think we, we have been tasked by the community with this bond money to move forward and get the schools built that we need to get built, but I think that we also bear the responsibility of doing it correctly. And so that's why I have so much concern around the ed specs is I, we talk a lot about systems and processes and putting those in place so that we have something to follow in the future. And I think that's what we really need to focus on as we are negotiating the contracts and getting them in place because we know that we need to do that. I think we just need to make sure that we're getting those sound and solid systems in place so that the next time we come around to this, we we have something solid there and a solid roadmap for, for us to follow. And that would just be my underlying, I mean, I think that's where we need to move towards. Yes, ma'am. That is all. All right, so we're ready to vote on the amendment. Does everyone understand what we're voting on? All right, then let's please vote. So the amendment passes. So now we are back to the motion, the assignment of projects as presented with additional work being awarded from the 2007 and 2014 bonds to the remaining architectural and engineering firms that aren't assigned on the original list, as well as the authorization for the superintendent to negotiate and execute contracts for the assigned projects. And that's our current status that we're voting on. Dr. Dupree, do you? May I ask a clarifying question? Yes, sir. The assignment of the additional work to those firms, is it, the, is it the board's expectation we would simply move projects up and just make that assignment, or does the board desire to see that for further action in the future? We should see it. We should see it. Thank you. So since we're talking about that and those assignments, and um, I found out this week and that we had Bay Architect um, already under contract for a bond project from the 2007 bond, which is middle school 15. So I didn't know that when we were talking about this last week, and I didn't remember that we brought that up I guess I kind of figured that out some at some point during the week is there a risk Mr. Cleaver that when we say we're going to go into contract with all these folks if we were to approve this list now we go into contract with all these folks are we have to put some of these projects in the drawer as Mr. Rice says negotiate a contract have them start doing things are we going to what's your What's your thought on that? Um, obviously, there's risk in everything we do, but the contract would allow us to stop work and pay the design professional through what they've done. What, what's the likelihood of us having to put something in the drawer at this point in time? As, as far as the projects that are on the table now, I, I don't see any of them getting put in the drawer. Okay. They need to they they need to all go forward simultaneously is what you're saying. Yes, sir. 
Okay. And even if the demographic data we heard tonight, even if we have 30 percent less growth than we expect, because I think those numbers we saw tonight were the moderate growth numbers versus the low growth numbers, and the low growth well, I'm mixed up now. The low growth numbers are even slightly above the 30 percent drop that she referred to might be expected in the, um, you know, going forward in terms of the economic situation. As, as, I, as I understood the presentation, even with the 30 percent, she indicated it was a very nominal difference in our projections from the low growth, that we would need these schools regardless. It was, a, it was okay. still ended up There's being a fraction a of a difference. 300 or 300 or 400 students, it wasn't. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just to pipe in there, I don't think we need, we need to go forward. We can't go backwards. Um, we need to learn from our past mistakes, and we can't halt the schools just based on these demographics because we know the growth is coming, um, especially, she said tonight, Fieldstone which is all zoned to Oakland. So I, I see us moving forward, and especially Jordan Elementary, PAC 2. So uh, I think I'm with Mr. Rice. No, no drawers. No drawers. No drawers. OK. Ditto. All right, any more discussion? All right, so we have our amended motion. And we're ready to vote. Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Cleaver. We are looking forward to hearing back from you with regard to the ed specs. We're looking forward to seeing if we can schedule a workshop to um, appropriately discuss that. And we are also looking forward to um, amended policy if necessary but procedures from design and construction so that we are clear and have clear expectations throughout the whole district all the people that are working for you and all the people that are sitting up here um, as to what's expected and what's going to happen and how these things are going to go so um, we'll look forward to that in the very short term. I know that's on the task timeline that we talked about at the design and construction audit a few weeks ago or a couple months ago now. So we'll look forward to seeing the revised task timeline. I haven't seen that yet, but I'm look, we'll look forward to that and we'll get that uh, ironed out. So. Yes, thank you. And and the good I think the good news here is that the the team that's responsible to help me deliver that most of them are here tonight. So I'm not going to have to pass that on. They, they heard it directly. They heard it firsthand. Well, yes, ma'am. That's very good, and I think it was pretty clear from all of us that um, we need to put the framework in place. Yes, ma'am. So that we know what we're doing. When in an in an organization this large, if we don't have good framework, then everybody's doing their own thing, and we're not aligned, and we're not all heading in the same direction. And it's very important to us that we're all headed in the same direction and everybody knows what's expected and everybody in curriculum instruction knows what to expect when they're training their teachers as to what the new school is going to look like and everybody that's an architect and engineer knows what we need in curriculum instruction and all of these things and there's methods in place for communicating all that so yeah. sorry i'll get off my horse but i'm very i like to be very intentional and i we're a little scattered right now, so I'd like to get this aligned, and I'd like to be more intentional about it, and I'd like to do the things in the right order. Right. Yeah, we we don't we don't need any more mistakes. I mean, we've had Lay we've down. had schools built too big, we've had schools built too small, we've had you know, things we've had to redo, and we just we can't afford mistakes right now. So we we got to all be on the same page. So. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. All right. Uh, our next item of business is the um, future board meeting agenda items. Mr. or Dr. Dupree. This we have two meetings in May. Is that sufficient? No. Look at all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But at least. Yes. At least one workshop. I think we're headed toward three or four. 
Um, May, we have two meetings as scheduled. We're going to be working to schedule a workshop on ed specs. That will likely be in May, given the timeliness of that issue. Um, legislative update, budget update. As we discussed last week, we're going to be doing a pretty comprehensive budget overview uh, so that the board can be prepared to consider budget adoption in June. Um, we'll also be, depending on, as after I visit with the board president about strategic planning, we may be or may not be discussing additional um, strategic planning efforts at the regular meeting or workshop where we may plan another opportunity for that as well. Then as you can see, there's a number of items, um, some architectural work to be assigned, a um, number of technology projects, pay adjustments, um, proposed bond sales. Um, just A lot of this is routine information, but we just like to keep the board informed of what is upcoming. Um, and then June, we move to the budget adoption period and a few um, technology or uh, school wires contract to extend that contract. And then in July, um, it's very, uh, let's see, just a number of other routine items, really. Employee benefits update, uh, public hearing. I'm sorry, I'm way off on there. I've got something wrong. Sorry, disregard July for now. And you can see at the bottom, we're kind of tracking a number of the policies that we need to address. So I'm going to be working with the board to determine um, are we going to handle those through the comprehensive policy review or are we going to pull them and consider them um, on an independent basis. All right. We have a workshop um, to do, um, or I guess that we're going to meet early in May in advance of the workshop to talk about some strategic planning and the superintendent formative evaluation. Correct. That's at 5 o'clock before the workshop. Mm -hmm. In May, their the regular scheduled workshop. I should say the agenda review workshop. And on your policy list there, we brought up tonight the small business initiative policy. Correct. We'll add that. Any other uh, things we want to discuss? I'd like to apologize to Dr. Hill and Dr. Wickbeck and your team that were was here prepared to present to us tonight about the um, I think you were going to prepare uh, present a little bit more about the uh, some special ed or something like that and uh, I apologize that we didn't get a chance to get back to that but we'll look forward to hearing about that um, hopefully next month so we'd like to reschedule that because our core business is education and then and we need to spend a lot of our time uh, learning and discussing it uh, as a board and um, as a team. So appreciate the first part of your presentation tonight and we'll look forward to hearing the second part very soon. I see everyone poised with their green lights on. Motion what comes to next? Wait, I have Motion one. to go to I, sleep. I have one comment before we do that. It, it was helpful, I think, to get the report to read before the information item happened tonight. If that can happen in the future, it, it was helpful to me because I was able to review that and it made the information t information item tonight more meaningful and I was able to organize my thoughts and my questions. So if, if we could get that before the May information items, that would be helpful. We're working hard to, to do that when we can. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, I thought I heard a motion from Mr. Rosenthal. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, meeting adjourned. <laughs>